Okay, so there is no problem. So here the picture that I have shown you, I purposefully have shown you. Yesterday we could not take a class because we went down to Bilkot here towards Violent and towards Silchar to uh, you know attend the wedding function of your teacher, Dr. Rimkima, parapsychology teacher. Okay. So that's why I could not take the class. And your teacher, Dr. Chandama, is his friend in this wedding. Okay. So pharmacology class yesterday we could not take it. So any one of you can go and do congratulations to your Dr. Kimasar. Okay. So this is the picture I can show you. Okay. So let us go to our remaining portion. Yesterday we have started with. Uh, this uh, yesterday, the day earlier, we have done the that some of this pharmacokinetic portion. Okay, so we have seen the definition of pharmacokinetics. It originated from Greek words. Then uh, there are two terms: pharmacon and kinin come together, and they are generating the from pharmacokinetics, okay. In that, we have seen three, uh, four important points at me that we used to mention, okay. So absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, okay. These are the complete set of pharmacokinetics, you can say, okay. So this were what we have seen and we are somewhere here. So this is what we have to see now. How do drug enter into the cell? How do drugs get distributed? How are they going to get distributed? And for that, they need to pass some kind of layers. Okay. So some membrane have to pass through to reach to the uh, site of action. And for which they need to be carried there. They need to penetrate certain layers. And for that, there are modes of penetration. Some of these are there, perceived diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport, endocytosis, exocytosis, aminocytosis. So these are the mode of transportation. You are going to your hometown. How do you go? You are boarding the plane or you are going by the road. Okay. So... Those are nothing but you are being carried there. You are being carried there. So you, some kind of you know carriers are needed. This this kind of transport is transport system, and somewhere like in passive division, you need not to because you yourself is built with two legs. Okay, God has given you. So you are going to somewhere without any assistant. Okay, you are not forced and willingly you are going there. And in the situation, everything movement is very free. It's on your will and your capacity, your stamina, whatever may be. Okay, but in certain areas where you have to pass and very long distance, and if there's any kind of barriers, you need some kind of energy, you need some kind of carriers. Okay, so likewise in drug entering to the tissue, entering to the cell target, Tissue, they need to be carried there. Okay, some kind of energy is need to be input at that very juncture. So for that, we have passive diffusion, we have facilitated diffusion, we have active active transport, we have endocytosis, exocytosis. Okay. So to recollect our previous courses before further going, this actually otherwise some of you were absent. Uh, in very short, we'll just recapitulate. Okay, this was what we have seen from Ukaiyatics. Yeah, in that absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, what we call ADME at me. This absorption, you are injecting a drug, you are giving to orally, and that has to get absorbed to reach to that certain person. And then it getting absorbed from the layer. Suppose you give subcutaneous layer, then that will penetrate that has to go to blood circulation. Okay. So likewise, these were the thing that we have discussed, and every individual 
point of this absorption distribution metabolisms elimination we discuss in a very short this one slide but the details we are slowly going to it then we are going to absorption okay so this was what we have seen in the last class the drug has to reach to the blood stream to go to further distribution okay and the, how it reaches to the blood stream is you know there are different mode of like what we have said that it have to be facilitated they have to be in uh, passive you have to be active so on those are the process the how that it getting reach to the blood circulation and getting distributed okay that is what, what we have to see again that when we say bioavailability okay i assume that most of you have already uh, i mean most of you were there so we cannot repeat again again like a normal class just i mean a brief uh, recapitulation so bioavailability we have said means the amount that reaches the systemic circulation okay, you give it to orally then there is a disintegration and from the git getting absorbed to the blood and that amount that reaches the blood circulation is nothing but bioavailability okay so the formula or the you know uh, yeah, the uh, unit i mean uh, what they said that denote the bioavailability is nothing but f okay in a percent it has been taken okay so suppose you take paracetamol that you all know that is antipyretic and to certain limit analgesic anti uh, analgesic drugs that reduce the pain to certain limit. but mainly paracetamol is antipyretic that reduce the temperature in a fever cases okay that we all know so as this is what we have seen AUC oral AUC IV let us assume that if we wanted to know by o availability of the drug of the paracetamol let's say Pfizer has prepared uh, Ranbexy has prepared another paracetamol if we wanted to compare we can do it one is by studying by o availability okay so you are going to give orally you are going to give iv and you are going to calculate pharmacokinetics but at this level you don't need npg we are teaching the calculation method okay and usually as i told you i used to do with excel there is another software also directly you can do it so then the amount that is calculated out is nothing but it will be bioavailability of the drug okay like example here you take 100 mg of drug and 70 mg of drug has been absorbed and changed retaining the efficacy effectiveness so bioavailability of the drug will be 0.7 or can be written as 70% as such okay so it's a very good bio availability here we can say okay that is what we have already seen then factors that influence oral bio availability here we can think about absorption as well without any proper absorption this bio availability is not going to be very good one but we want good bio availability of a drug means it is going to get distributed very well okay means we want drug to be good i mean uh, having good absorption it should be entering to that target area okay so these are the factors that we have seen okay i'm not going to repeat further detail in detail all the all these are nothing but factors then now we are here okay so let us have a look here i think you can see passive diffusion facilitated diffusion okay let me do it in a presentation mode so here passive diffusion here it doesn't need any energy it doesn't require any carriers okay because movement of drug molecules across membrane from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration okay means there has to be some kind of equilibrium 
you can say. Okay, you take uh, something uh, in a container, water, you take it, then like, uh, let's say kettle, you know, kettle, you have it. You pour the kettle with the water and when it reaches the, I mean, portion, the mouth or something that you can call it, where you can pour it out, okay, then there water will be coming out freely, okay, without any hindrance, no need of energy, but by a kind of gravitational force. This is a normal situation we have, okay, so there is no energy, there is no any curious as Okay, here also we have not seen any energy requirements. Let us have a look here. This is a cell membrane that we have seen here. Okay, cell membrane are composed of protein, lipids, aqueous layer. Okay, so drugs are given here uh, through orally, through injection, and it reaches to this cell membrane where it further has to go on pen penetration. So, best perceived diffusion of water soluble drug throughout a uh, uh, true and occasional or poor. Yes, you are having kind of, you know, uh, filter membrane. If the pore size is very small, then penetration of the water or the fluid or the solvent is will be difficult. But if the pore size is increasing, bigger, then penetration will be more easier. So likewise, here, the aqueous uh, channel it have, if the aqueous formulation of our drugs are given here, and if the pore size are enough to allow the passage of the drug, there is no any blockage here, okay? Then the drug will move down here without any kind of assistance, okay? So we have here another passive diffusion of a lipid soluble drug. We have a cool soluble, water soluble, and another one is lipid soluble one. And then this is a lipid layer. Okay, it will easily move down and reaching to the cytosol level. Okay, no hindrance, no problem. Okay, but suppose if you give this a cool layer, to this area, okay. If this drug is trying to penetrate to this area, like suppose you intend to treat the CNS infection, but you give the drug that is a coarse soluble one, not lipid one, then blood brain barrier has to go penetrate through it, then you will have a problem, okay. That will not go to this extent, it will be hovering here, or you'll get some destroyed and some metabolisms instead of going to the target site. So that is the actual meaning here, okay? Most drugs are absorbed through these mechanisms, no carrier involved, no non-saturable, okay? So that is the point that we can see now. Then we have here another term, facilitated diffusion. Yes, we are going to facilitate. We are going to help it. Or drug uh, is going to be helped by certain substance. Okay. You are going to, you know, say, what to say? Uh, um, carry some heavy lock. Okay. So you are in a hostel on the, say, uh, first floor. But something you have to carry, very, uh, like, like suitcase that is full of whites, like your yeah, gym equipment. You are packed inside your suitcase and you are trying to carry with your hand, but in a single hand, it's not possible. Rather, you use something to carry at your bag to pull it up. Or here, we see today's suitcases are mainly, you know, having the pulley also. At airport, at railway station, at bus station, you are there. But your suitcase is very heavy. Then you use that pulley. You pull it up and you drag it. And with the wheel, it moves very fast. So all of this, including the wheel, they are nothing but, they are facilitating the 
substance to be carried to where you want it to with ease without any problem. Okay, so that is a purpose here. Entry to the cell to specialized transmembrane carrier proteins. Movement occur from the area of the high concentration to the area of low concentration, like passive diffusion. Does not require energy. Can be saturated and inhibited by compound that compete for the carrier. So we have here an example drug one, two, T four. Assuming that that has been split into these molecules and needed to enter this one, this area, the cytosol area, but it wasn't possible here. It's stuck up there, but there are drug transporter, drug transporter come for that particular drug, okay? But all the drug transporter will not be coming there to help that particular drug, but that particular drug has to be designed in such a way that it trigger. You don't have to design. Okay, after you achieve the PAZ and be in a pharmacology and so on, and targeting for industrial, this one, manufacturing of drug, then you, your knowledge will be important. Okay. So drug transporter, the drug is designed in such a way that it can penetrate and trigger the drug transporter. With this ease of drug trans, uh, use of utilizing of drug transporter, then finally, you will be able to reach through the target site. Okay, so that's how they require some facilitation. Okay. So it can be saturable. If there's another drug that can inhibit, that can in, you know, compete with this drug transporter, if you give a mister simultaneously, or one after another, the drug, the other drug, suppose we have here a red DDDD, and that is rather binding to the tra drug transport, that one will be combined and that will be transfer, transfer here, but not this one. So that kind of competition will be there. Okay, so that is what we have seen here. Okay. <coughs> so we are all together, how many? Number. Let me just have a look here. Uh, we are 15 number, very good. But there are some people who are yet to join, I suppose. Okay, we'll resume here. This is okay. Presentation. Let me put it in. Okay, let us go ahead. I hope you can see it. Mm -hmm. Here, active transport. Yeah, Trasvali, now join. Involves specific carrier proteins now, it's different. Carrier proteins, okay. Then also require energy. Initially, facilitator door can be of drug transporter that we have seen it, but here we have carrier proteins, specific carrier protein that has to be, you know, nicely, you know, comparable with the drugs. Okay, egg dome fitting, you can say. So here, what we have seen is that active transport, there is an energy involvement. There is a kind of facilitator, or you can say carrier proteins, a drug transporter. Okay, so then due to this true involvement, only active transport to occurs. You are going to get the drug to be absorbed to that layers, and depending on the formulation of the drug, different you know uh, actions to be taken like. 
you have seen facilitated, active, uh, passive. So here is an active one. Okay. It requires energy, it requires a transporter. Move the drug against the concentration gradients. Initially, what we have seen? Higher concentration to the lower concentration. Here, against the concentration gradients. Okay. Lower concentration to the higher concentration. Okay. So, need some kind of force for which energy is required. You are going, just now we have said about a lock or some kind of suitcase. You are carrying up. You are carrying up to the higher level. Then it requires energy. You need to get some kind of energy, okay, very high energy, okay, so that is something but requirement of energy. Then it is selective, this area is selective, selective for the specific drugs, okay, because these roots, these are meant to go for the penetration only for selected drugs. Selected drugs in the sense you don't need to get water, but the thing is that when we are going to administer a drug when we are going to use to treat the drug, uh, I mean, disease of animals or ourselves or our family members. That time we need to know whether this drug will be able to treat the area, the infected area, whether it get absorbed or not. This is the point. Here is selective, okay? It's saturable, can be inhibited by concern or transport the substances. Okay, that we have to keep in our mind. Then another one, uh, another one. Okay, let me just stop here for the time being, and because of the presentation, I have to alter, alter it. This is scroll down. Okay, this is what we have seen. And when a mode change, sometimes I have to bring it back to uh, from the beginning. So. Endocytosis, endo inside, exo outside. That is very clear. It's a common sense, okay? Today, I used to say common sense is not common to all, but let it be common to all of us, okay? Common sense is common sense. Transport of exceptionally large drug, exocytosis, and government of molecule by the cell membrane, endocytosis, Exocytosis, the reverse process that leads to the release of molecules. So exo, you know, let us assume external, endo, internal, okay? So engulfment and release, throw out, okay? So that is, so what endocytosis? It's engulfment. It coming here, the drug large molecules is engulfed and protected. And when this, after these protections, and there will be some, some time that it will get released from here. Okay, so that is the purpose only. Whereas exocytosis, this protection, then it will get released from here, exocytosis. Okay, and government, then release. That is what we have seen here. Let here, example, vitamin B12 transport across the gut wall by endocytosis. Okay, from there it's getting absorbed further. Yes, this are nothing but all are nothing but absorption only we are studying. Here is also another factor. Most drugs are weak acid or weak bases. Here we can see disintegrating or splitting into different component and basic they are different component. What we have seen is weak Acid will not enter the basic layer. It'll get, you know, neutralized. Hydrolysis will happen. Where uh, likewise, weak bases will not get to acidic layer unless there is another process. Okay. So, in a normal situation, that is happening here. Okay. So what we have seen is this is weak acid. This is weak base. For that, let's see. Drug pass through the membrane easier when uncharged in a neutral form, you can see. Okay. So when pH is less than pKa of the area, protonated form predominant. That means positive forms are predominant, positive signed. When pH is higher than pKa, the protonated form predominates. 
between drugs acidic or alkaline drugs are passing through the membrane. This is the thing. So, of course, pharmacokinetics body are divided into different components, central and peripheral components. And one is non compartmental another is one or two, three compartmental models. They are there, okay? So that is for kinetic calculation purposes. There is no any differences on as such in a normal situations, okay? So here we have here, that's why this is, is mentioned body compartment. Body are divided for pharmacokinetics and mathematical calculation of pharmacokinetic purposes. These are divided into different compartments, okay? But here as a whole body compartment is written. So this is a lipid membrane. These are nothing but lipid membrane. So we have here acidic. Acidic, yeah, what we have the protonated. Okay, so they are going to this layer. Suppose this is basic layer, the penetration as acidic layer, acidic drugs will be very, very tough job. Okay. So there is a release of certain uh, substance out of that when it is entering. So likewise, we have seen a basic layer, it's a lipid membrane, assuming that, okay. So this also penetrating to the uh, uh, membrane layers and then losing certain substance, releasing certain substance and then getting entry and again further disintegrating inside because of the pH difference and because of the fluid in other fluid influence. Okay, so that is about the purpose of, I mean, how the weak acidic, weak bases are going to get inside the body. Okay, there is certain drug, I mean, a certain release disintegrations of the form that have been, you know, initial as a parent one. Okay. So here we have, in continuation with that, this is a pKa level at this level. Then when the pH is decreasing, when the pH is increasing, so this is what we have seen it. pH is greater than pKa. What we can see is when it's less than pKa, oh, sorry, less than pKa, the protein forms HA and BH predominate, protonated, the positive sign. Hi. Yeah. Sorry. So okay. slide is not changing. Yes, oh. sir. Okay. Yeah, this is a problem. A minute. A minute. Let me just repeat it. Let me just repeat it. Yeah, I should have checked it myself. Yeah, I'm all. Oh, I forgot to check sometimes. Okay. Now it's a new slide coming. <clears throat> so what we have seen is here, ionized and non-ionized form of drugs. Ionized is nothing but it's a kind of, you know, water-soluble one. Whereas non-ionized are nothing but lipid-soluble one in a simple language. Okay. Ionized are the drugs that are excreted. Drug, when you give it to the body and they are, you know, disintegrating, distribution and everything, then finally metabolize and going for excretion. Suppose your drug is non-ionized at your kidney level, urinary tract, before it reaches through the filter or somewhere in the fil filter, okay, of the urinary tract, okay, bromine capsule, then it will get further absorbed. That is a normal process. But in many situations, most of the drug, they are going to get converted to ionized form and going to get excreted. Okay, so that is the process. Let's say, let's take an example. If acidic drug is given here, then it will be ionized in basic medium. Basic drug is given, it will be ionized in acidic medium. Ion trapping is there, that is a different issue, where acidic medium will be protected in basic medium, basic drugs will be protected in acidic medium, that is ion trapping, that is different, that we will be seeing through it later on, okay. So here, when pH is less than pKa, when pH is less than pKa, the protein form H and B is a predominant. Okay, when pKa is equal to 
a pH is equal to pKa at this very juncture, the acidic will be this uh, uh, um, uh, the molecules will be in this form and negative form, the splitting or disintegrated one, whereas the basic will be in positive form. Okay, so this is in this kind of situations when there is a neutral pH, okay, a pKa and pH are equivalent, I can say at the very middle juncture. When pH is greater than pKa, here we have seen that the protonated forms A carrying minus sign and B predominate, okay, pH. So here is a pH, pH is increasing where is the pH is decreasing here. That is what we have seen here, okay. The distribution of drug between its ionized and non-ionized form depend on the ambient pH and pKa of the drug. Okay, so the drug has been assigned F, a pKa of 6.5 somewhere here, okay. So there will be some kind of ionization, deionization process depending on the influence of the pH of the drugs. If acidic drug is given here, it will retain the non-ionization form. But if acidic is given and if pH is this environment, it will be ionized form. So vice versa with basic drugs. Okay. Let me repeat. Where acidic drug is given and pH of the environment says stomach is there, or your skin layer is there, suppose, and if pH is in this range, in acidic range, and the drug is acidic, it will be non-ionized form. Whereas pH is very high in alkaline states, and acidic drug is given, it will be ionized form. Okay, vice versa. Base drugs, when it give it, it will be ionized here, base drug will be protected here, will be an ionized form, okay, so that we can have it. Then the factors influencing absorption, the second number, blood flow to the absorption site and more the blood flow, flow means more the chance of getting absorption, like some of the organs are very highly infiltrated, uh, in, in uh, uh, I mean supplied with the blood, okay. Yes. So, let me repeat, the slide is not moving. Okay, now it's visible now. Things visible like this. So, uh, more the blood flow at the very area where you are giving drugs, then more chance of getting absorbed. Okay, because blood flow is much greater in the intestine than the stomach, absorption is greater in the intestine. Likewise, when drugs you are given, and then let's say the locality where you are injecting is near the vicinity of the uh, good blood supply, then absorption chances are more. So like that is the thing, it will be carrying. And I mean, uh, absorption, I mean, reaching to the blood are intention. And finally, the blood will carry to the target site. Okay. Total surface area available for absorption is also important. Intestine have large surface area, again. Okay total uh, uh, surface. If you put, let's say 100 mg in a very small wound, let's say small surface wound, so it will not penetrate, it will be, you know, you know, uh, piling up, stacking up one another. So likewise, but if the wound areas of your palm side and you're putting a five, uh, 100 mg uh, you know, randomly spreading or uniformly spreading, you can say evenly spreading, then absorption chance will be more. So that is depending on the surface area. 
contact time absorption surface is very very important absorption is affected by change in gastric motility contact time if the truck is not there for a long period of time saying here diarrhea is an example suppose you take uh, some drugs another sick and you get vomited yeah yesterday one of your teacher uh, who was with me i mean uh, i would take your class also i'll not name his name yes he was having motion sickness i was having vertigo to reduce the motion sickness but you know soon after he take the drug he vomited out everything so there is no chance of getting absorbed the drug so the purpose of giving him the drug was in vain no use then he vomit again so what i am saying is that the drug has to be retained there for certain period of time to occur this good absorption okay so some of this p glycoprotein is nothing but drug transporter drug carrier you can say so expression of p glycoprotein is important in getting the drug absorbed otherwise some drugs are not going to get enter into the cell membrane and pass it through the cell membrane without any assistant so for which they need some kind of transporter okay so <clears throat> drug transporter reduce absorption in liver kidney brain in intestine in certain cases if there is over expression of glycoprotein okay so what is glycoprotein here let us have a look here we we'll scroll scroll is not possible can you can you see why it went there may repeat again yeah glycoprotein is present or the de designated spgp then the function in the liver transporting drug into the bile for elimination in kidney pumping drug into uterine over expression is not you know advisable you can say in the liver transporting drug into the bile for elimination kidney pumping drug into urine for excretion in the placenta transporting drug back into maternal blood thereby reducing fetal exposure to drugs in the intestine transporting drug into intestinal lumen and reducing drug absorption into the blood in the brain capillaries pumping drug back into blood limiting drug access to the brain so these are the purpose of the drug transporter we call p glycoproteins but high expression reduces absorption okay it will be getting transported somewhere on you know, the other side so uh, actual uh, absorption will be reduced here if high expression over stimulation is not good okay so these are about some of the factors that we can see and at the same time let us have a look of bioequivalence and one of your senior uh who have an mvsc here in veterinary it was one of the first kind of thing that i see have done the study on bioequivalence of certain drugs and she was awarded with young scientist as well also yes this is very important many time pharmaceutical company are claiming that this quantity like tablet let us say one pharmaceutical company is preparing a tablet 500 mg another company is also preparing a tablet 500 mg they are saying that it contain 500 mg of pharmaceutical active substance and there are some questions from a public of course post surveillance has been continued after the drug has been marketed then doctor keep on you know recording the efficacy also if there ever is a complaint then bioequivalence study is needed to be carried out okay to compare the bioavailability of drugs 
Though claim is 500 mg by one company, another 500 by mg company, and when administered in the same kind of animals, same kind of conditioned, it should show some kind of same bioavailability. Okay, plus or minus some changes, some limit are there that is permissible, but otherwise it should be comparable. Okay, so if not, the claim made by a certain company can be challenged in a court of law. Okay, anyway, let us see bioequivalents. Two raised drug preparation are bioequivalent if they show comparable bioavailability, similar time to achieve peak plus blood plasma concentration. Okay. Therapeutic equivalents to similar drug product are therapeutically equal if they are pharmaceutically equivalent with similar clinical safety profiles. Okay. So these are the study curve. Bioequivalent studies of some generic medicine and original brand. Okay, brand brand name. We know it when company are analyzing it and they are putting the name because brand name is usually a costly one. Brand drugs are costly one. Generic names are chemical. Those kind of drugs. Okay, original one you can say. Okay, so they are comparing the generic, the original one, that FDA approved one as a chemical, okay, and not owned by any company as such, but this is owned by a company. So they are comparing here the bioequivalence. What we can see, they are more or less similar, nanogram per and uh, this one ml in body concentrations, okay. So, but during medicine is much higher, so the original brand that have been claimed is lower. In more or less, they are quite similar, but if some people are, you know, very having keen observations and very particular in it, if they said it should be just equivalent, of course, 100% equivalent might not be possible because blood influence and something is happening, of course, 100% exact equivalent will not be there, but to state that this can be acceptable level maybe, okay? Then here we have, anyway, let me just explain in a general way about this one, drug action. Whenever we are doing pharmacokinetic study, we inject the drug animal in some selected individual or animals, at least six or more. So we are taking the blood samples, zero, five, 15, and so on. Okay, so those are, you know, those in the blood sample, we are analyzing the presence of drug. Then after that, we are doing the statistic and putting on the curve like this. Plasma drug concentration. Initially, drugs is increasing and getting absorption and then getting distribution and reaching the peak level. After that, they are getting metabolism and then excreting it. So this level is actually, this level is action. Here it will reproduce a actual desire action. In it trigger action and then it terminate the actions. Okay, then metabolizing, eliminating it. Okay, so this period is nothing but duration of drug action. Okay, you take an analgesic and you got relief of around one hour. So that is the duration of action, okay? Beyond that, it's a toxic effect and this level where you, you get the desired therapeutic range is nothing but this, uh, the actual action that you intended to achieve. To reduce the infection, you can say, okay? Then uh, drug distribution. Drug distribution process by which a drug reversibly leaves the bloodstream, enter the interstitium, and then other cells. Then for IV drug, no adjustments are required. It's already in the IV or in the venous vein or blood with the blood or the mix. Then distribution occurs immediately after administration with IV. Here, if you give an IV, it is not going to go this way. It is going to go this way immediately in the IV, okay, getting distributed 
and then started getting metabolism and elevations. This is IV process, okay, drug distribution. And then let us go here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> this is drug distribution. Drug distribution depends on cardiac output, region of blood flow, like absorption that we have seen. Here, yeah, these factors are also important. Many a time they ask in the question. Then capillary permeability, tissue volume, drug protein binding in plasma and in tissue, and hydrophobicity of the drug. Hydrophobicity of the drug, water, like afraid of water, you can say in simple language. So it's a free drug molecules here. Drug is given, disintegrated, there is somewhere. Okay. Then drug is going to bind to something receptors. Okay, drug protein complex or some proteins, you can say. Okay, carrier protein, let it be here before it can reaching to the target site. In the target site, it will be binding to receptors. But here, before reaching that, it binds to some kind of proteins. Let us assume that, okay. So here, there is a tissue, there is a capillary, okay. Drugs are given here. This is a plasma in the blood, okay. Then with the protein, they are binding there. With the proteins, they are binding, making a complex, okay. Then some are going to the tissue, okay. Some are not going to the tissue. Okay, so this is how it have to be in drug distributions. Drug are absorbed in the bloodstream and are going to get distributed to certain tissues. Are going to get distributed to certain tissue. Okay, depending on the formulation of the drug, you'll have speed of distribution, the pace will be different from uh, with the other, uh, that drug formation and the other drug formations, okay. So these are the factors for getting the distributed cardiac output and region blood flow. Blood flow is, if it's more than chance of getting carried and then getting distributed is good because absorption itself is good. Capillary permeability, depending on the capillary of the tissue or the blood, then the permeability also determined the distribution and depending on tissue volume where it has to reach there if tissue volume is high enough and can accommodate the drug then distribution will be very good drug protein binding if the drug, drug and proteins are binding very strongly distribution will be less okay but if there is no proper binding with the drug proteins distribution will be more here there is a protein binding and distribution will be less if there is no proper binding here, it cannot be bounded with the, uh, the drug. This protein is not fitting with the drug, then it can go there and distribute it. Then hydrophobicity of the drug. If the drug is hydrophobic, means not matching with water, distribution chance will be more because it has to penetrate lipid layers. Okay, only a coarse layer, those uh, Hydrophilic substance. Hydrophilic is water with affinity with water, you can say, it can mix with water. Those drugs will be, you know, distributed well in aqueous layers of uh, aqueous tissue. You can say, okay, more aqueous layers are there. Whereas hydrophobic lipid soluble one will be distributed very well, depending on this distribution of the drug also happening. Hydrophobic water afraid okay so these are the things that we have just seen, but we'll just read out before we conclude it we'll be finishing distribution of drug today blood flow due to unequal distribution of cardiac output the rate of blood flow to tissue capillary is variable blood flow to the brain liver kidney is greater than those to the skeletal muscles adipose tissue skin viscera have lower rates of blood flow example High pentyl, highly lipid soluble initially rapidly move into the brain due to high blood flow produced anesthesia. Anesthetic drugs, a slower distribution into skeletal muscles and a deposit to lower plasma concentration and CNS concentration. So, CNS is regained. Okay. Then, let us go to capillary permeability. Depends on capillary structure, chemical nature of the drug. Okay, so if capillary permeability is less, then uh, it will not reach the target tissue. Distribution will be good, 
Okay, if capillary permeability is very high, then I mean good enough, drug will get you know, penetrate or will get distributed very well. Okay, so here are some of these. Let me increase the size. I don't know if it's possible to read out or not. We're just finishing it. Structure of the brain. Let me put in the this format. Yeah, here are structure of liver capillaries. We have structure of the brain capillaries and penetrability or barriers of these are different. Okay, so that's, and, uh, this was just enough, I think, for timing. Then drug protein binding, we have here again. Drugs are binding to the protein albumin globulin. If they are bounded, they are not free drug. Okay, they are not free drug. Only those are released from the protein bound or those are free, are not bounded to the proteins, are free drug. And these are going to get distributed. But in many cases, high protein binding also very good to produce a long action of a drug. If they are bounding, they will get released slowly. So we will keep having, you know, we will have uh, action, continuous action. Okay. Bound drugs are producing continuous action. But actually, the one that produces action is a free drug. From the bound area, they are slowly releasing it. Okay. And more bounding, binding means less distribution, less metabolism, less excretion. Okay. So binding to the Tissue protein drug can accumulate in tissue due to tissue protein binding, extending the effect or causing local toxicity, hydrophobicity, hydrophobic drugs cross cell membrane, hydrophobic drugs need to pass through the slit junction. Okay. We know where this hydrophobic. Volume of distribution. Let us, uh, six minutes we have. Volume of distribution, VD. These are calculated. For pharmacokinetic purposes, okay, and just for your information, VD is the calculated amount of drug in the body and concentration zero. Okay, so VD is nothing but apparent volume of distribution, actual volume of distribution. Okay, pharmacokinetic for pharmacokinetic calculation purposes, this formula are generated. Okay, they are important for dosing to calculate the dose dosage regimen and toxicity. Permacoine, the calculations are important, okay? So let us have a look here. These are the examples. We have no physical. This is, it can be used to There are some examples that is written here, but it's not clear here. Okay. No need formula. Try to remember apparent volume of distribution of rest. With one another, what the purpose of the cell? Adiposite, cell membrane, nucleic acid, nitric of cell. Okay. If it is useful, for calculating loading dose over time. Okay, so that much is important. Then plasma half life. The half life. The amount in the body have to be metabolized and get excreted. So the half portion of that is excreted, you think about the half life. Length of time in the drug plasma constant. The greater the half life of the drug, the longer it takes to excrete. So, longer half life means longer action of drugs. It determines the frequency and dosage of the drug. So, when they are calculating the dosage, where you are taking some drugs four times a day, where you are taking like one time a day. Okay. 
okay discretion so it's a factor of the negotiation those regimen so this is all about today class so stop here of course pharmacology sometimes it's not all the time interesting is sometimes chemical all of this